Episode 5. Let's face the music and dance. Pino's bar in late June. Tony arrives for his morning coffee. Morning. Usual, please, Scarlet, my love. Morning, Tony. One cafe latte coming up. Oh, and when you're ready, can you pop a tea in the flask for lychee in the van? He's asked for green tea, if you have it. We do. How's your week been, Tony? Gangbusters. We're booked up for months. Fantastic. Hi, Matthew. Diamond, I'll bring lattes over in a minute. The launch? Oh, my God. How are we meant to compete with that? Did you read the reviews? Yes. It's just a flash in the pan, though. Look at them just sat there grinning at the camera like Cheshire cats. People will get bored. To be honest, mate, when you look as hot as they do, they won't get bored. It's unprofessional. It's not a catwalk. Whatever. Those girls will go down a storm all over the papers today. Look. Tabloid clickbait. Hmm, I reckon that Valentine show will have a knock-on effect for our business, so I'm going to stock up in the plumber's yard on chrome and gold taps. Well, Rise and Shine do have a huge budget. They need Valentine and Emerald to draw in people. Oh, they'll draw in people, all right. I'm glad they've gone in this direction, actually. It'll make us stand out even more. Our stories will be for discerning listeners who want serious news. Are you going to cover the G7 in Cornwall? Well, when we are ready to go live next week, it won't be a new story anymore. Why? Talking to a mate of mine who works on the boats down here, says the locals were livid. Cornish lanes were blocked for hours. None of that was reported in the news, just what a triumph of international solidarity it was for world leaders. Well, not if you're a local. People who have paid for staycations had their olives ruined. What else did you hear? Oh, all those choppers and limos carrying one person... No one was worried about the environment with the Biden entourage and all the other world leaders having their own transport. Bleeding nightmare. That's a good angle. We could cover that. Sure. My mate will tell you all about it. Right. Need to get cracking with the date and Lychee cheers waiting. Cheerio all. Hope he likes the tea. Tell him it is Sencha. Will do, Skylar. Lychee's a good bloke, but he's a man of few words. I'll let you know if he don't like it. Pino's Bar. Friday, the 25th of June. Ravi, we have a scoop for you. It's about the G7 summit down in Cornwall. Well, it's a friend of Tony's, but not sure how bona fide or accurate the information will be. You'd be surprised, Simon. The G7, reported from the angle of the local people who live there in Cornwall. I like that. I'll follow it up. We need to get perspectives from ordinary people. This will be our USP. USP? Unique selling points. Do we need to sell then? I mean to engage, stand out. We cannot compete on celebrity interviews, so we need ordinary people's views. Right. So one of the stories I'm checking out is the Freedom March in central London on the 26th of June, tomorrow. I didn't even know there was a march organised in central London. It is not covered in the main papers or news channels. We can cover it. Exactly. So I'm going down to the march. We'll get some photos and talk to people. Can I come with you? Of course. And me? If you want. I do, actually. We'll have enough stories for our launch on July 1st. A load of government material that will break over the weekend. Will Matt Hancock resign? For sure. The bigger question is, why will Hancock resign? Really? Really. You always need to ask why. Why? Why? Like a bloodhound. I have six friends. They talk to me all I know. The road to Mandalay? Journalism has become a sponsorship deal with affiliated parties. We are non-affiliated. That is our strength. Our listeners can make up their own minds. Exactly. Here are the coffee, gentlemen. Tea for you, Ravi. Uh, not many people here today, so I can chat more. How are you, Skylar? Great, thanks. Our website's now up. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. Gosh. I found an extra technical person. Oh, who is that? Spike said he would help out. He knows all about the technical angle of production. Who's Spike? A guy who comes here for coffee. We got chatting, he offered to help out, so I took him up on his offer. This is a startup and an unfunded one at that. Well done, Skylar. Excellent networking. Thanks, Ravi. Oh, the website looks marvelous. So professional. Thanks to another friend who helped me put it together. It's not done yet, though. I need your input. Oh, wow, Skylar, you work fast. You've done everything while we sit here drinking coffee. It's the New Yorker in me. <laughs> while you are here, I need content and copy for the front page. Let's write it. We might need to rewrite bio pages as well. Look, there's a video of Judy. Yes, Spike videoed that with her at Hampstead Heath. He has been a busy man, this Spike. It's popping up all over the place. He's been really helpful. Actually, he's dropping by later. 
Gentlemen, let's write the copy, shall we? Maybe it's a job for a professional copywriter. Simon, we are the copywriters, presenters, researchers. I had a feeling we would be. Later that evening, Burmese restaurant in Hackney. This food is wonderful. Glad you dig it. I've never been to a Burmese restaurant. I wanted to bring you somewhere different. Well, you certainly have. So how did you get into the theater stuff? I've always watched shows in theater since I was little. My mom used to take us. Bet you'd make a terrific actress. Really not my thing. I tried, yet I knew my real passion was backstage, you know, production. Yeah, keeping us crazies in control. <laughs> and I did a BA in theater studies. And then I did a year with Juilliard on backstage productions for the experience. I was set to get into a Broadway show. So what happened? I had the opportunity to come to London. You did? Yeah, my mom's English. You know, I have family here, and I have a dual passport. Half US, half UK. It's a great mix. So I live in one of my relatives' houses in North London. Actually, they're away in Devon most of the time. I look after the house. No kidding, that's dope. So when did you come over? 2019, and I was working for a theater company, and then the pandemic hit. Ah, uh, yeah, no furlough? No, I carried on studying here and, and got involved with a Zoom theater production. What was that like? It was mental, but great. Um, gee, you'd never believe how much work there is to put on a Zoom show. <laughs> I can believe it. I really enjoyed it. You are one talented lady. I don't know about that, but I did learn loads. And the coffee gig? Oh, that makes ends meet. I choose my hours and Pinot's great. Kept me going through the pandemic too. I met lots of people, including Matthew and Simon, who started coming in for their coffee. <laughs> and me? Yes. How about you? How did you end up in London? I studied at art school in Queens, and I got a scholarship to come here. Wow. And I brewed up my own thing, doing digital and videos of my raps. Would have got back to NYC with a gig, but the pandemic just messed that up. So sorry. Nah, I'm good. It's gonna happen. Oh, for sure. You just gotta keep plugging away. Yeah. Yeah, I've been through some shit on the way. <laughs> with the family and stuff. Really? What? Nah, I, I don't wanna get into it now. You know, uh, I know how to look after me. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pry. Nah, no worries, it's all good. Where'd you learn to edit? Worked for an agency doing adverts and marketing stuff. I do a bit of DJing for some online gigs, like you. Gotta make that bread. <laughs> I can tell you're a New Yorker, always hustling. <laughs> I might have met you there. Destiny. Yes, well, very kind of you to offer to help us out. No worries, you can count on me, 100%. Great. I'm really excited about what we're doing. You're doing great. We're on to something special. I hear that the other side, the Rise and Shine show, is doing good as well. We do us, they do them, we're not competing. No. We need to keep our way of doing things to ourselves for now. What do you mean? Caroline Singer, the producer. What about her? She's all about big ratings, and she will beg, steal, or borrow to get her show to the top. Ooh, so how are you going to keep her off your back, then? Mostly, I don't want her to know how the show is being produced, or how we will source the stories. Mm -hmm. She won't learn nothing from me, honest to God. I'm thinking of getting everyone to sign an NDA. A what? A non-disclosure agreement. Uh, we need to firewall all our assets. Our assets are our team and our IP. IP? Intellectual property. Gotcha. Well, look, you don't got to worry about no NDA or nothing. I'm your buddy, you can trust me. I got you. Thank mm -hmm. you.